Hello, engineers. Today, as we start looking at the light process in science, we're going to read a book. It's called The Energy We See, A Look at Light. And the author's name is Jennifer Boothroyd. I don't know, it's probably a little fuzzy to see through the video. <clears throat> this is actually a book that uh, we have back at school, but since the copy that we have is in fact at school and we're not, we're going to read this online version of the same book. So this is a non-fiction book. The purpose is to teach us all about the energy we see, and that is what light is. Light is defined or means energy that we see, just like sound was energy that we hear. Here's the table of contents. You can see that there are one, two, three, four, five chapters, as well as some cool things at the begin at the end of the book. So let's get started. <clears throat> what is light? Light is a form of energy. It is an important part of life on this planet. And then at the bottom, there's a label or a caption, picture of some flowers and the sun, and it says, sun helps plants grow. <laughs> on the next page, which is actually page five, it says, most of the light on earth comes from the sun. The sun is a natural source of light. So the detail to remember, is that most of the light on earth comes from the sun. Fireflies and lightning are also natural sources of light. Fire gives off natural light as well. So although most light on earth comes from the sun, <clears throat> some smaller amount of light on the earth comes from other natural sources like fireflies and lightning and fire in general. At the bottom of the page, there is a caption which says, this campfire is a natural light source. And then on page seven, it says, people have created ways to produce light. This is called artificial light. And the label says, Jacob's reading lamp gives off light, artificial light. Let me read that again. Jacob's reading lamp gives off artificial light. So now we've learned a few details and the big idea on this page, the detail for this page is that <clears throat> some light is artificial light, the light that human beings create through electricity like through lights and even computers and even this phone, that's all artificial light. The other type of light that we already read about is natural light. And the biggest source of natural light is the sun. <clears throat> Long ago, people used candles or oil lamps for light. Here it says, a young man reads by candlelight in the 1600s, 400 years ago. So before human beings had invented light bulbs, the artificial light that we invented, and it really, I guess, what we invented was the candle, which used natural light, uh, fire, to light our rooms and our homes and our lives. These days, electricity is mostly used to create light. Light bulbs, flashlights, and TV screens give off light, artificial light from electricity. So artificial light versus natural light.
<clears throat> okay, here's a subtitle, and it's a really cool one. <clears throat> How Light Travels. So this section of the book is going to be all about how light travels. And probably when you're looking at this video, you can see a natural source of light shining on my computer from the sun in the background. So I'll try to get this closer so you can read. It says light energy travels in waves. Light waves move in straight lines until they hit an object. <clears throat> Here comes a really cool fact. Nothing moves faster than light. Light from the sun takes only eight minutes to reach Earth. Let's think about that for a second. We just learned the fastest thing in the whole of God's universe is light. And it takes eight minutes for light to get from the sun to the earth. Now, I don't know if you know this, but the sun is millions of miles away. When we send spaceships up towards the sun, it takes years for them to get there. But light is so fast, it can get from the sun to the earth in eight minutes. Now, what that means is, if you go outside, first of all, you never want to look directly at the sun, but if you see the sun out of the corner of your eye, that's not how the sun looks now. That's how the sun looked eight minutes ago. In other words, whenever you see the sun, you're not looking at the sunlight now, you're looking at the way the sun looked eight minutes ago. You're looking back into the past, eight minutes. <clears throat> now, I know that you've heard that the sun is a star, one of billions of stars that you'll see in the sky. And when you see the other stars in the sky at night, they're even farther, much farther away than Earth billions of miles away from Earth. And when you see that starlight at night, that light from those stars, that's not showing you how the stars look now. That's showing you how the stars looked billions of years ago, or at least millions of years ago, not how they look now. And I think I should correct what I said. It could even be thousands of years ago, but not much sooner or more recent than that for most stars. So when you look up at night and you see stars, you're looking back into the past. You're traveling back through time. You're being a time traveler to see the way the stars looked in the past. That is one of the coolest things that I've ever learned in my life, <clears throat> I think. So, on this page we learn that light, like sound, light travels in waves. And it, light waves are the fastest thing in the universe. And when we see objects up in the sky, like uh, the sun or stars, we're looking at how they looked in the past when the light left them. Very cool. On page 11, 11 is a palindrome, by the way, it says light bounces off the object. So when light um, travels through waves, it bounces off of an object like a person or like this computer or this book. When a light bounces off an object, this is called reflection. And then the caption says, light waves move like ping pong balls. They bounce off of objects and keep moving. Reflection. <clears throat> All objects reflect light. 
we are able to see things because light bounces off the object and back to our eyes. In this um, picture on page 12, you see a girl, she's uh, reading at night and she's using a flashlight. The light waves travel from the flashlight. They bounce or reflect off the book and into her eyes. That's how she can see the book. And the caption says, light bounces off this book. On page 13, it says, smooth and shiny objects reflect light well. Objects that reflect light well give off reflections. Reflections let us see what is nearby. And the label says, mirrors give off reflections. <clears throat> so whenever you can see your reflection in an object, it's because that object is smooth and shiny. And so the light waves from either a light or from the sun leave that light source and then they go and they reflect off this girl to the mirror and then because the mirror is so smooth and shiny that light then bounces off the mirror towards our eye and when it does so we can see the girl's reflection her picture in that reflection because it's so smooth and shiny so whenever you see a reflection in a mirror or in glass or in water it's because those things mirrors glass water are smooth and shiny so when you're looking at this video I think you might be able to see my reflection off of the computer screen why because the computer screen is smooth and shiny so the light from the Sun is coming in through the window bouncing off my very shiny head and then reflecting to the light screen and then into the camera and then eventually to your eyes. Pretty cool. By the way, you could say my head reflects too because it's smooth and shiny. <clears throat> Object. Oh, if you click on the word, it tells you what it is. Oh, here's a new subtitle. Light stops here. Some objects are made from opaque materials. Opaque materials stop light waves from moving through them. So opaque, O-P-A-Q-U-E, is a cool science word for objects that don't let light get through them. <clears throat> so the caption says, Lewis can't see through this opaque blind field. Blindfold, not blindfold, blindfold. So opaque means it can't let the light get through it. Here's something you could do, perhaps at home. It says if you shine a small flashlight towards the wall in a dark room and then cover the lit end of the flashlight with a book, the light will no longer shine on the wall. The opaque book will block the light. So if you try that, then a book will block the light, which means that the book is opaque. Page 16. Next, hold a pencil in front of the lit end of the flashlight. You'll see a dark area on the wall in the shape of the pencil. This is the pencil's shadow. When an object blocks light, it makes a shadow. Bigger objects make bigger shadows. Smaller objects make smaller shadows. The caption says, the shadow of a large tree provides shade on a hot day. So a shadow is the blocking of light. <clears throat> when an object, an opaque object, blocks light, light can't go through it, so there's an area of darkness, an area of no light, and that area of no light is called a shadow. Oh, new subtitle, just
passing through. So the previous subtitle was Light Stops Here, and that was about opaque objects. A new subtitle, Just Passing Through. So this must be about light that does pass through objects. And it says, other objects are made from transparent materials. Transparent. How many syllables is that? Transparent. Three syllables. Transparent materials let light pass through them. Glass is a transparent material. The caption says, we can see clearly through a glass window. So... Now there's a new cool science word, transparent. Before we had opaque, which were objects that light cannot pass through. Transparent materials are ones that let the light pass through. <clears throat> so if you go back to that flashlight trick where you're in a dark room and then you put a piece of clear plastic wrap over the flashlight and point the flashlight at the wall once again, light moves all the way through the transparent plastic wrap because plastic wrap, like glass, is transparent. Translucent materials only let some light pass through them. There's that word, translucent. We can't see clearly through them, but we can see some light through them. This lampshade is translucent. Can you say that word? Translucent. Only some of the light from this light bulb shines through the lampshade. So now a new, another new science word, translucent, which is objects that let some of the light waves get through them, but not all, like a lampshade. Oh, here's a cool, cool idea. <clears throat> On page 21, the speed of a light wave changes when it passes through some materials. This change makes the light bend or refract. There's another cool science word to refract is to bend, to bend light. Bent light can play tricks on your eyes. <clears throat> so at the bottom, the caption says, water in this stream refracts light. The fish are not actually where we see them. They're off to the side of where we see them. So if you ever had this experience, you're swimming in a pool or a lake, and you reach down to grab something that's at the bottom, and the object isn't actually where your eyes think it is, because the water refracts or bends the light and makes it look like the object is a bit off to the side of where it really is. <clears throat> Here's a cool experiment that you could probably do at home. It says, look at the spoon in this glass of water. The handle looks broken because the water refracts the light. The caption says, can you read it? The spoon is still in one piece, right? You can see the part out of the water of the spoon, the part that's out, that's where the spoon really is. So we know the spoon actually has to be right underneath the part that's sticking out, but the water reflects, refracts the light and makes it look like it's over here to the side, but it's really over a little bit to the left. If you get a chance, try that at home. It's a pretty cool idea. Here comes a new subtitle, Colors. So the next few pages are going to be about colors. The light that we see usually looks white, but it's actually not white. It's actually a mix or a combination of seven colors, the seven colors of the rainbow. Oops, I'm trying to tap on it, I got to click on it. <clears throat> when light is bent, 
you can see the different colors. What are those colors? Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet create white light when they're combined together. But if you take white light and you uh, pass it through um, a spectrum, which is like a piece of glass, the white light gets broken up into its seven colors, the colors of the rainbow. That's why sometimes you'll see little tiny rainbows from the sunlight going through the window in your house or at school. Light lets us see the color of an object. Try getting dressed without light in the dark. Can you tell the difference between your black and brown shoes or your blue and gray socks? No, because there's no light. But when there is light, we can see an object's color because the object only reflects the light of that color back to your eyes or our eyes. The other colors do not bounce off the object. So when you see green grass, the, the caption saying green grass reflects green light waves, but not red light waves, not, unfortunately, not uh, pink light waves, <clears throat> just green light waves. The red ball only reflects red light waves. So the way something gets its color is depending on what light waves that object reflects. The world would be a very boring place without light. So that's the end of the book. There's a cool um, activity that you could try at the end of the book. We're actually going to do an activity in a few minutes in science, so that'll also be fun. And then at the end, there's a glossary. So another clue that this is nonfiction is there's a glossary. Glossary is like a dictionary with all the cool words we learned in this book, like opaque and reflect and refract and shadow, translucent, transparent. So that, boys and girls, is the book, The Energy We See, A Look at Light. Have a great day.